Spinning platters have been around for a while for storage, and we still like to call these spinning rust, even though the technology has become much more advanced here in 2025. But there's still a place for these and a performance place for these. Now, there's a lot of platters in modern drives, and Seagate came out several years ago with their Mach 2 drives. So taking all these platters and having a single actuator, well, creates an inefficiency. Why not take the actuators and split them into independently operating actuators and then take a single physical drive, this is a SAS model of the Mach 2, and have it show up as two drives. So this is 14 terabytes, or as it presents in the system, two by seven. Now, there is a SATA version that I'll leave a link to that Wendell did a video on. I don't really like the SATA version that much. I'm talking about the SAS model of these drives. And yes, they've been around for a while, but the bigger reason I'm talking about them in January 2025 is the price has come down. $69 for this drive is a good deal for the performance you get out of them. I'm going to talk about how this works in TrueNAS. It's not officially supported, so it's kind of a workaround. I did talk to some of the developers at TrueNAS, and there may be a future where this is supported. It's not exactly on the roadmap, but if these become popular, and I think with the prices dropping and this becoming a very affordable solution for a high-performance setup, uh, this is a really compelling and interesting option. So we might see support in there as long as all of you are saying, hey, we should do this. But I will leave you to decide. So let's get started talking about how they operate, how it sets up in TrueNAS, and uh, what I think of them, which too long didn't watch. They're pretty cool. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, before we get into the how of setting this up, I want to talk about the why. I've got tutorials you find linked down below where I dive more in depth on how ZFS works, but the short version here is the Z pool is made up of data VDEVs or special VDEVs. And you can have multiple data VDEVs. This is how we get more performance. And in this demo, we're going to be setting up two different VDEVs. But this is the important part because of the way these drives and the unique properties of them are, is they present as two drives. And if you put all the drives in a single VDEV, when you remove a single drive, you're actually removing two. And if you're not familiar with how RAID Z works, Z1 can suffer a drive failure, Z2 can suffer two drive failures, and Z3 setups can suffer three drive failures. But of course, as you go up in the Z1, Z2, Z3, having more drives for redundancy also reduces the amount of storage you have available. So there's different trade-offs for any of these setups. But what we're doing here is putting each one of these drives, one physical drive, but splitting them into two RAID Z VDEVs. We're going to be doing this with seven physical drives, giving us the total of 14, seven in each VDEV. This still means when we pull out a drive, we will lose a drive out of each of the VDEVs, but being at the RAID Z1, they can survive that. For more production environments, RAID Z2 obviously would be a lot better, and RAID Z3 would be the most ideal. But the problem with doing this inside of TrueNAS is TrueNAS uses the serial numbers to uniquely identify drives. Even though these have separate smart statuses for each of the sets of actuators, the drives themselves share a serial number, and this is not something currently supported in TrueNAS. Therefore, it does not like setting them up. So we're going to have to set them up from the command line. Now, when we set this up, I'll be using a script that you'll find linked down below that is from the Level 1 text forums. That script will look at the drives, and I'll also be covering how to see them and how to identify which drive is which, because that's the important part, making sure that you physically know the drive in there, but then the two sections of the drive as it presents. And so you can set up your VDEVs properly, putting each leg of the drive where it belongs. This is TrueNAS Scale Electric Ale 24.10.1, latest version available here in January 2025. And I'm going to go to here storage and create pool because someone may want to try this, but I don't recommend it. You can click allow, go through, set up the layout here to be RAID Z1, 
choose the disk size, choose the width of seven drives with two VDEVs and think it would work. But for some reason it errors out. But the bigger problem is of course, I don't know which drives are going into which side of which VDEV. There's not any logic currently in TrueNAS that would automatically do this for us. So we're gonna go to creating this pool from the command line. I'm gonna use the command LSS CSI TAC U to show all the drives and their logical unit numbers here. We have the dev SDA and SDB, so as it presents as two drives, but physically they're one drive. Qualifier is that digit in that part right there that lets us know they're separate. But if we go here and we do a smart control, dash I for info and do dev SDA, we see the serial number for this particular drive. But if we did SDB, we see the same serial number again, but the logical unit ID is what allows us to identify each of these drives. They have the same serial number, which because they're one physical drive in the system, but there are two sections of the drive identified by logical unit numbers. Now, the way the level one text script works is by going through and listing disk by ID and creating this that you can essentially copy and paste and run as a command to put all the drives in. I wanna clean this up a little bit so it's easier to present how this works. Now you can see the command Z pull create, the name of it. And then we have the RAID Z1. And you can see there's no one in any of these because this is the first half of the drives. And this is the second half of the drive. So we have the one in each side of here. This is the first part of the VDEV. This is the second part of the VDEV. So now we'll go ahead and create that pool. Now the pool is created. Don't worry about the error about cannot mount. We'll show how to do that once we're in TrueNAS. We'll show a Z pool status. And now you can see all the drives. Here is the first VDEV and here's the second VDEV. Now, when you're in TrueNAS, this won't show up automatically. We're gonna to have to import this pool. But before we can do so, we have to reboot the system. Something I've run into, and maybe this is just the setup I have, the system wants to time out trying to look for pools. And what I had to do is take these drives out for the system to boot faster. If not, it pauses a long time and waits about 15 minutes. Now, once you're into TrueNAS and it imports the pool, you don't have to do that process anymore. It was just after first reboot. So let's go ahead and reboot this system. Okay, now that TrueNAS is rebooted, we're gonna go over here to storage and we're gonna import that pool we created. Click import. All right, now that's imported, we click on manage devices and this is where there's some UI element bugs. It does understand half of the drives because it sees the first serial number on there, but not the other half. So it can see them, but it doesn't put the little icon next to them. So it doesn't understand the drives. Also of note, the smart status will not work on those. So if we go back over here to our storage, and we go to manage disks, it only sees half the drives because of the same serial number problem. So you can't really do any of the smart testing inside of here. These are some of the bugs you'll find with TrueNAS in here. But in terms of the ZFS functionality, data sets work, Everything else works perfectly fine. I haven't had any other issues outside of those little UI elements there. But as I said, maybe in the future, this will be supported in TrueNAS and that would be pretty cool. Now, while I don't think the UI element problems inside of TrueNAS for managing the disks are a huge deal, I do want to warn you, if you go this route, things like smart control not working is one thing, but if you have to do any type of drive management expansion, you're pretty much going to be left with the command line because I have a feeling that these UI element problems right now in version 2410 are going to plague this drive setup essentially, because the single serial number just causes some confusion. I imagine there's a future where TrueNAS does support these because I don't see dual actuator drives going away. I, matter of fact, I would say they're probably gonna be more and more popular as the price comes down and there's not really a big downside other than figuring out how to set them up. Platters are gonna be around for a while for storage, or at least that's what I believe. Uh, the SATA version, I will give one more mention. I said in the beginning, I wasn't a big fan of it. Granted, just because I have SAS setups and it's obviously gonna be a lot more effective for setting up and doing it the way I said, but Wendell did cover, and he's got links in his forums on that in his video, that this can be done on other NAS systems with the SATA. You just have to do some funky partitioning and take the single drive and split it in the two. And he's got scripts to show you how to do that on a few different models of NAS, including Synology. So it might be interesting if you have a SATA system, but I happen to have SAS and that's what works for me. And I want to know what works for you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Love, you know, hearing how you think of these drives. Are they 
extra complexity to an already complicated way we're doing storage? Are they not necessary? Or is getting essentially double the performance out of these really worth it? And I kind of lean in towards that. I wasn't excited about these when I first tested them, but the more I started using them, I said, okay, this is, this is really cool. So interesting. And uh, it, it just kind of tickled me a little bit. And I thought that's why I'm sharing it here with all of you. But like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to lawrencesystems.com where you can connect with me on the socials and join the newsletter and keep up with what I got going on. All right. And thanks. Thank you.